Hello everybody, this is Maniac for Bricks, and I am here today with set number 48465, the KISS Monster Rock Stage Big Rig Building Set from Kinex. This is from 2013 as a release, one of two different KISS sets that were made by Kinex. Ages 7 and up, 329 pieces, comes with 6 minifigures, or Kinex figures if you want to be correct, and this was originally priced at $35. It has since then dropped down to about $25, and in some places may not be available in stores anymore. I found this at $25 at Toys R Us. It's the only place that I know that still has it, and in fact had it in the first place, because this was a Toys R Us exclusive set, in comparison with the other Kinect set, which was available at other retailers. Let's take a closer look at this set now, and let's rock and roll all night and party every day. Here we have the box art for the set, and as you might not be able to tell, this is actually a pretty large box considering the pieces used for it, and I think it's actually too large compared to how it's packaged. It's a lot of open air, and even the sides have a tendency to bend a little bit, as you can see on the top, it has a little bit of bending, um, even when you find it in stores. Here's a look at it compared to a minifigure, so you have a rough idea of how big this thing can really be as far as a box. And there's my hand also for comparison. And as you can see on the box, it shows in the top right, top left corner, Kiss Monster, just like their most recent album, ages 7 and up, 329 pieces, and it also shows you the QR code for the set, so you can see it on the website. And also shows you America's Building Toy and Connects on the bottom. In the middle part, it shows you the set itself with everything assembled, and also shows you the special feature of the set right on the front of the box. On the sides, there's really nothing to really see, although it does show you a little bit better look of each of the KISS characters on the top. Again, I apologize it's bent, but again, being an open-aired box, considering the amount of parts that you get, it really didn't help. Now, as we can see from the back, it shows you each of the characters included in a little bit better detail, one to one scale. It also shows you the back of the box, or on the back of the box, it shows you the full setup, which we will get to a little bit later. It may be hard to see, but there are a ton of bags that are included with this set, all of them in which I've laid out before you. I don't remember the exact use of parts throughout the set, and I apologize that I don't have the building video for it. Um, it got accidentally deleted at the time of recording it. But most of these are larger, I think there are about three large bags, and inside of them had some smaller bags. Um, each of the Connects figures were put into their own small bags, just like this one, and there was tape on them. Some, also, some small parts were also put into some of these bags. I know that all the accessories for the drum were put into a single bag as well. We got a lot of bags here for a lot of things. Some smaller parts went into some smaller bags, some bigger parts went into bigger bags. And there we have all of our bags. Must have been... that's a lot. We have a sticker sheet with this set, and there was only one sticker that wasn't used. Um, I've already checked the instructions multiple times, but this Connect sticker wasn't put onto the set. I guess it's okay to put wherever you want, but it would have been nice to know where exactly it goes. There was also another piece of packaging material, which we will get into later of what was inside of here. This was, um, not exactly cardboard. It's a, it's a little bit thicker than regular paper, but this is the material that is held up for the back of the truck. And it's actually pretty wavy right now because everything's disassembled from it. It has a perforated outside, so it makes it easy to um, take this out when you open up the set. There are only a few extra parts that um, came out from this set. As you can see, some of them are cylindrical. Some of them are just small rod-shaped pieces. We have one of these blue pieces that's extra, and I've tried to look at the instructions just to be sure everything was built correctly. So I do apologize if something goes wrong later on that perhaps it was a missing part. Here's the instruction book for this set. It's only one large instruction book, and unlike your uh, usual Kinex instructions, this is not a fold-out one page. This is actually put into a stapled book. 
Here's my hand in terms of comparison. And let's open it up and see the inside. First page shows you some of the features and also shows you a table of contents. Something I rarely see in an instruction book that it shows the table of contents for building the transporter rig, the trailer, and the figure assembly. Which, by the way, I forgot to mention earlier, the figures were pre-assembled in the packages. So you don't necessarily have to build them together. They are already built when they are bagged. Here's a look at the parts list. It also shows you some basics in terms of building with connects so that you can follow the instructions uh, in a good pace. Also shows you all the parts for all of the figures on the bottom. And it says they are made in China. It's interesting that they pointed out so clearly. And these are the same kind of building instructions that you see with your typical connect sets. Although I will have to say the building experience for this was very poor. Every time I tried to put another piece on, it seemed like another one was going to fall off. And a few times it did. Especially with some of these larger black pieces just being stacked on top of one another. I wasn't really a fan of it because it was just stacked on top of each other. They're very easy to move in and out of place because of the brick building system that Connects has made. And it was also, I don't know, not really in structure with each other. But we'll get more into that a little bit later. I'll just try to flip more fast through the book just to give you more to see on the inside. It was a little bit difficult around here for the trailer section, but it now made sense to me how that goes together. On the back of the trailer, there are sections where you need to push out small pieces of the, uh, of the material just to fit these rods through and also hold them up on the other side. Then you also fold it over and it attaches. It also shows you on the very back page the figure assembly and which figures get which accessories. Um, but one thing I noticed, I am not, I'm actually missing this little stand and I've tried to look through all the packages but I haven't found it. So I don't really know where it is, if it's missing from my box or if it's missing from every box of this set. Let me know in the comments if you have this set. Let me know if if that piece was missing from yours as well and if, I, if there's a way that I can find them again. On the back of the box, or instructions I mean, they show you the other KISS set that was made with Kinex. This is just the figures, slightly different in terms of the instruments, in terms of color and design, but still your basic figures, um, which you could buy roughly for $10. It, the price may fluctuate now because this is an older set, at least at the time of this video. So here we have the first two Connects KISS figures of the set. These are the KISS Army roadies. These are the ones that help set up the performances. They drive around the truck that's included in the set and, you know, get all the special features, you know, and lights and setups for the KISS concerts. In comparison to a regular minifigure from LEGO, I'll just move this guy over, and you can see that they're a little bit taller than your average LEGO minifigure. So they're not too bad if you want to have a crossover between Kinex and LEGO. Um, these are basic as far as Kinex figures go in terms of height and size and function. I'll just take mine out of there. And you can see they also have multiple joints. Not only do we have movable legs, but we also have movable ankles, or knees, I guess. It's hard to tell from this perspective, but kind of looks like an ankle. Um, so you do have more posability with these figures. You also have bendable arms at the elbow, so it does make it, again, more articulation for these figures. These are exclusive to this set because they have the Kiss Army t-shirts. These are stickers that are put onto the figures pre-packaged in the model. On the back it has connects and these can also sorry about that. These can also turn at the waist. So these are pretty interesting figures. I like the connects figures basic form and they work well in terms of you know trying to pose them and move them around and giving them a lifelike feel. They'll also have a ball jointed head and as you can see they 
the hats are pretty easy to fall off of them, but they can still be reattached pretty easily. These are two different faces for two different roadies, and they have a blue and red cap on them. Next up we have from left to right the Demon of Kiss and the Star Child of Kiss as portrayed by of course Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley. Now these are pretty well done figures. I really like how their designs are really shown through the um, torso and facial details. They also come with some neat guitars which is you know the famous Axe bass guitar and just a v-neck for Paul. You also can see they have some good detail on the hair to match the actual people and you know in their performances. These figures are also taller than your average Kinex Kiss or Kinex figures um, because they are, have boot attachments. These go on the bottom of their feet and just give them a little bit more height and a little bit more detail to the figures. Although they do make it harder to stand on surfaces, especially Lego surfaces, sometimes connects bricks, um, but they still work out very well. Well done with the details. Here are the Kiss figures, as mentioned before, without any of their hair, guitars, boots, or other details such as jeans, um, shoulder armor, so you can get a better look at their faces and their torsos. Very well done, I'd have to say. Next up, we have the Spaceman and the Catman, as portrayed most recently by Tommy Thayer and Eric Singer. I know there have been previous guitarists from KISS, such as the famous Ace Frehley, and many other, actually, a lot of different drummers from KISS um, throughout their history, but I'm just sticking with the two main ones since... You know, the set's based on KISS Monster. I figure this has to also do with the most recent KISS members, Tommy Thayer and Eric Singer. You can see they have some nice details, once again, on their torsos to bring out the costumes that they are wearing. They also have the boots as a separate attachment onto their feet. And the boots can, you know, are individual pieces, so it makes it easier for you. Ooh, told you they don't stand up well. As I was saying, the boots are separate pieces, so if you want to move their legs around independently, um, with the boots on, you can still have that ability. And you can also see we have some drumsticks, and we have... can't figure out which guitar that is, but I'd like to say, without any musical knowledge, that it's a Les Paul or a Gibson, but honestly, don't harass me if I'm wrong about that in the comments. Just be kind to, you know, identify the guitar that is used by Tommy Thayer. I honestly don't know. Now let's take a closer look at each of their details. So there's a better look at each of their heads and their torsos. And what I've noticed with all four of the Kiss figures, their hair is kind of a rippery plastic. It's not too thick, but it's still able to squeeze a little bit and still, you know, retain its shape. And also with... Um, I guess I'll, I'll call him Ace Fraley for now, but I meant Tommy Thayer and Gene Simmons as far as their shoulder armor. These are also very flexible plastic pieces. Just something to note when it comes to, you know, the material quality of each of the pieces. And there they are from the back. Now let's move on to the set. So here we have the first part of the set, this is the rig itself, and it's actually an impressive size compared to the figures. I actually like how big it is and just, you know, has an interesting, you know, length to it compared to the trailer. But there are a lot of problems with this part, particularly. I mean, there's, there's a lot of problems in terms of its construction. I'm actually trying to move it around very carefully. Um, because it's very fragile. I've had parts in the front fall off, parts underneath fall off. This whole section would ro would rock back and forth. It's It's got a lot of problems with structure. Mainly because if you look at it in the instructions, a lot of it is just built with these pieces stacked on top of each other, no in-between stuff. These pieces are stacked on top of each other, no in-between stuff. 
Uh, you have a couple of stickers on here. You can see the Kiss Monster sticker, the door handle. Yes, yeah, so that's actually a sticker. Another door handle and the Kiss Monster sticker again. And you also have, oh, there goes the first piece. A piece for the grill and a sort of license plate that says Kiss on it. And as I try to fix this, another part, you know, kind of got out of shape. And I think I've mentioned before on this channel how these Kinex brick built sets are really flimsy. They're really fragile. Um, because the construction, you know, for these pieces doesn't hold together. It's really a problem. But design-wise, it looks good. Um, there is a little bit of color here, which I don't mind too much because it makes the building experience easier for kids. Um, and it's also an interesting way of using the micro pieces instead of just putting a couple of bricks on it. There's also this interesting piece on top. You can take the figures out of here by taking all these pieces off the top. Then you just unclip these two parts. And I was able to fit both figures on the inside of here. So... It's really a four wide space, but you could squeeze two figures in there. I figured it was the best place for them because at least it makes it look like, you know, the roadies have, or the, uh, whatever you call them, the crew has a way of, you know, transporting in the truck instead of just being in the back section. I'll explain that more in a little bit. You can also get to these sides by opening up the doors. Ugh. I mean, like that. And there are little uh, rear view mirrors on both sides. That's kind of cool. This whole part is easy to fall out of place. And there's also not much detail in there. It's just a steering wheel. You can see this is probably the third or fourth time it's happened in this video alone. I'll just clip these back on. And then we put these back on the top. And as far as the back, there's really not much that's going to hold this to the trailer, except for that little blue piece. I've had a few times where this whole assembly would pop off like that, just with trying to move it around with the trailer. There's a look at it from the underside. It's really, really plain. Not the best for building it. I can see LEGO doing a much better job with it. The next part of the set is the trailer itself. And here's a look at it from one of the sides where we can see... This big piece that I was talking about earlier is attached on it with small pins on the outside to keep it in place. It has Kiss Monster written on it. It only sits on two wheels. It doesn't have a kickstand, so it leans down, which I, I would have liked to see a kickstand with it. And there's probably enough room to make one. There's a look at it from the front view when you attach it to the trailer. There's a small blue piece here that attaches the trailer hitch. There's no real locking mechanism. It just sits on top of it. For the next part, I attached the trailer to the rig so it can have it stand up properly. And you might even notice, if you take a good look, this is a little bit out of line with the rest of it. These two parts stay uh, stationary, while this part opens up. Not exactly on hinges, but it just has a folded out display. These parts come up. And as shown in the box, we get our rock stage now the only problem is that like, there it is told you it was gonna come off so let me put that back on let me put that back up here I'm sorry this usually doesn't happen when this opens up but since the rig is on an angle it's more likely to just pop off so let me try to do that again I think this can connect but we could leave it as is still holds up Give me a second. Okay, so now I've rearranged it, and now we have all the KISS figures with their instruments as best as I can display them, all ready to perform. Now, aside from just opening up the top of the truck, which I've seen with actual trailers, they, you know, open up like that, um, that's a cool feature. But other than that, there was a feature underneath, where you can see right here, there's a couple bars underneath that connect upwards to this large brick and that allows the stage to move out towards the audience that's a cool feature because i remember when i saw kiss um shortly after they released not monster but the album before it sonic boom 
when I saw them in concert, they had a bunch of those kinds of stages in which they were brought down and the members of KISS actually walked around on the stages and it moved out towards the audience. It was pretty cool to see. And I think that's also just a cool feature for any rock band that you want to put in here. Um, to have the stage outward and, you know, interact a little bit more with the audience, but still keep at a reasonable distance. Um, <clears throat> I have to mention this. It's very, very, very difficult, almost impossible, to get the drum set set up. There is no surface underneath these drum pieces. Well, first of all, that falls off. But second of all, there is no surface underneath these drum pieces that allows them to stay in place with the bricks um, you know, the giant brick that this is used for the display. So I don't know if the piece that I'm missing, as I mentioned earlier in the video, um, there was a great piece that the drummer's supposed to sit on. I don't know if that's supposed to help with folding this up, but just on their own, I've taken a lot of time just to try to set these up and stand them for, for reviewing, and it's very difficult. It's almost impossible. I can give the hi-hat a little bit of, um, a little bit of mercy because at least you can take off the bottom of it and plug it into one of these holes and maybe it'll hold up but and it's also just a little bit better structured on the bottom that it could stand up but for the most part no matter where you put these they'll fall over it'll sound like a big drum solo when it's just falling drums anyways um, moving on from that there's really nothing much else that can be seen from inside of the truck that's the only real thing that you get to build in there. The rest of it is a skeletal structure. It's actually, you know, holds up well to work with this little plastic layer around it. I don't know what material exactly that is, but it just doesn't look appealing. It, I mean, yeah, it has all the colors in there just to make it easier for building, but I mean, there's no cover up. There's nothing that makes it feel more like a truck except for when you close this. Because if you're driving on the road with this big rig behind you, you're going to see right through the truck itself. And that's also hollow from the front side. And I think I've already mentioned before, but it's very hard for this truck to make turns, especially big turns like this. Because if you tilt it enough this way, it will actually pop the hinge off and it will make it very hard. There it is. The hinge is popped off and you'll have to reassemble it. And, you know... So, wide turns should be a warning with this truck. Overall, uh, there's a little bit more of the display underneath. And if you want to close all of this structure up, you just simply move those pieces from the sides. And everything just folds inside. There we go. It just sits down there. This peg fits into that hole. And there you go. Ready to move out to the next concert. So overall, this is a good set if you want to get the KISS figures, but I highly recommend that if you want the KISS figures, get just the figure pack that's $10. You won't spend as much for this. You'll have less trouble with it because you just have the figures. And honestly, as a play set, this is very terrible. It doesn't hold together well because of the pieces, on the, especially in the rig section, um, but sometimes these pieces can be a little loose or a little bit you know, unsettling. Um, and as far as the play features, they're, they're good thoughts. They just need better construction. So I think I've pretty much summed it all up. I'm trying not to rant, but it's not really my favorite set. And I'm not really a fan of these Connect sets with the brick system that always fails to hold bricks together. Especially when they have bricks stacked on top of each other and no actual structure to them. So thanks for watching this video, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time with more LEGO set reviews and Connect set reviews as well. Let's see if I can move it off stage.